What's up fellow programmers and welcome to the fifth video in the C-sharp tutorial series. So this video, like I said in the last, is not really going to implement anything new, but rather we're going to take what we know and, and make something rather cool and a little less monotonous in the console uh, window because let's face it, the, 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 the black command line window, it's just plain boring, all right? So what I'm going to start implementing is uh, when I want to show you guys something is actually WPF. Okay. And I mentioned WPF in the first video and don't get me wrong. This isn't going to be a WPF uh, tutorial series, but it's going to be really simple. And, we're in it, and sometimes it gets the point across of why, uh, why we're doing something. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and start a WPF application. All right. And it's going to be really lightweight, nothing really too crazy. So, uh, you know, just keep that in mind. So we'll, we'll call it a clicker, all right? Because we're going to make a little clicker. And having a GUI to work with and some code behind it always makes it funner. For me, you know, it always, you know, rather than just pushing out, you know, things in the command line, having something to interact with really makes it fun uh, to code, you know? So we have our we have our WPF grid, okay? And, and really, that's, that's really, we're not going to get too much into this. And really, we just come into our toolbox, all right? So we'll go into all WPF controls in our toolbox. And remember, if you don't know where that's at, if you don't have that there, go into here and find it right here. Or if it's in other windows, find it there, okay? So it's in your toolbox. And we're just gonna want uh, a button, all right? We're just gonna need a button, okay? So if we just come over here and we just drag it over there, we're gonna need two buttons. We can line them up nicely. Really just drag and drop here, guys. Highlight them. Move it over here. And notice that we have now our two buttons and we can give it a plus in the content and then of course a minus here. And then we can do a click event, okay? So a method is going to be called a function like we just learned about in the last tutorial. A click event is going to be called and we'll do new event handler, right? So that's button click. Let's go ahead and give it a name. So we're gonna name our button. So we're gonna name it with BTN plus. And let's go ahead and name this one BTN minus. All right. And then we're gonna make a new event handler for this one, button minus. Let's go ahead and make a new one for this one too so that the naming convention stays the same. So all we're doing here, guys, we're just wiring up some events. So. Now, if we go into, if we right click and go into our view code, which is right here in the solution explorer as well, this is the code behind. Get rid of this one. And now this method gets called, remember this function gets called with these parameters. It's called button minus, it's void. So it just does a job, doesn't return anything. And it takes in an object of type object and a class rooted event args, all right? And this gets called when, it, when this is clicked and this gets called when the minus button is clicked. All right, so if we right click and view designer, we can come back into here. Now we're gonna need one more control and let's go ahead and go into our toolbox and let's do a text box, all right? So this kind of always makes it more fun when you have something to work with. You know, it just kind of gives you more of a reason to, to do something in C Sharp and, and really, you know, trying to get something working. And when you have a little GUI to work with, to me, it always makes it fun. So let's name the text box and we'll name it TXT value. All right, so now that we have our names, we can reference them inside of our C-sharp code, all right? So our, t our text is text box, and that's fine. But we can actually have it to be, let's have it zero for now, okay? Now, all this stuff inside of here, you don't have to worry about, I mean, like I said, this isn't a WPF uh, tutorial series, and if you are familiar with WPF, cool, it's, a, it's, it's really great uh, software, but of course, this is beyond the scope of the series, but let's just know that this gets called and this gets called when the buttons are clicked, all right? So now what we could do is when it's plus, we can do, we'll have a global variable, all right? So inside of our class, we're gonna have a global variable and it's gonna be int, we'll call it value, all right? And remember that a global variable is global with all the class, okay? So we have a main window class and we have a global variable that can be accessed inside of any method, all right? Now, if we do plus, what we wanna do is actually do x plus plus, or I'm sorry, value plus plus. 
And what that's going to do is increment it by one. And then of course, when the minus is hit, we want to do value minus minus, and that'll decrement it. All right. So now we want to update our method. All right. And what we could do is do txt value. Remember, that's what we named it inside of our XAML txt value, which is why we can reference it. So when we do txt value guys, and if we do dot, we get all of its properties and methods that we can do on this text box, all right? So let's keep it simple though. Let's do text, all right? So text txt value dot text equals value to string, okay? So we want it, it's an integer, but we want it to be a, we want it to actually have a two string value, okay? Since text takes a string, okay? And then of course we could do that here. So the text, we want the text inside of the text box to be the value of our value variable. All right. So let's go ahead and run this guy. And we have our main window that shows up, all right? So we just have our plus and then we have our minus, all right? And notice that when we click on our plus, this will go up. And when we click on this, this will minus. All right, and it will keep doing that until you have stopped because your fingers are cramping up. So, all right, so there you have it guys. And, and let me show you one more thing. Now, notice that like, you know, when we have a line of code right here and we have a line of code right here, notice these line, this, this code is exactly the same, all right? And it's always good practice when we repeat code to have it inside of a method. That way, if we say, if we wanna change this to, you know, txt value dot two string, plus value or whatever. We're gonna to have to do that here as well. And what if we had it in like four other spots? We're gonna to have to do that over and over again and just keep wasting our time, right? So it's always good good uh, practice to have if we have the same line of code or logic to actually put that inside of another method, another function, okay? So it's gonna be a public void or private if we don't want anyone else accessing it. So a private void and we'll just do we'll just do update text box is what we'll call it. And then it takes in no parameters because it can access the value from there. And then what we can do is if we hold alt and then down, we can actually move this code over just like that, all right? And then of course we can erase this code. So now what we can do is we can actually just call update text box here and then of course here. So now, you know, just in case, you know, of course it's gonna run the same way, of, of course, but you know, if we go to change something, you know, now I want it to be value or whatever, I only have to change it there and that's it, I'm done. Now, so that saves us a lot of time and if we have, you know, a huge program, that's gonna, you're gonna thank yourself later or you're gonna thank the programmer that did that because now you don't have to find every reference of it and you just know that it gets called there and then everything else is taken care of. So not really a, a big deal right here, but just a good little tip. So now if we run this, of course, it's going to act the same way and it's gonna call our update text box method. All right. So, I mean, obviously it's pretty simple um, and I hope the WPF didn't really, if you're not too familiar with it, I hope it didn't confuse you too much but it really gives us a good example of the little that we, we've, we've kind of gone over, which is just global variables and primitive types, like an integer and a function that takes in values and, and does a job. So we've gone over those in the past couple of videos and already with that, we can do something with C sharp, okay? So by simply just dragging over a few buttons and then wiring up some methods that are called when the user clicks on it, we can already do something that's to me a little better than just, you know, printing out to the console window, right? It's always nice to have some interactivity with the code that you're writing, all right? So there you have it, guys. Uh, there's something that, uh, you know, that you can you now use with, with your tools in your toolbox. And of course, in the next video, we're gonna learn more into, into what uh, C Sharp is really good at, which is object orientation, which is, you know, when we start introducing classes and uh, private variables, public, and then, instantiating you know reference types and, and all that good stuff so but as for right now you know there's a little application that we can now implement with the tools that we have now acquired all right thanks for watching guys